Hey there, this is uh, just a quick update without too much editing. I want to share with you my interpretation of tool post spinal. So I, I didn't have uh, much to show about how I built it. I, I have a couple of pictures, but whatever. Uh, that's very basic. This is a C45 steel tool block that I made on the mill based on the BXA tool post dimensions, just a little bit taller. Uh, this is on ER11 straight shank tool holder extension. It's about that long and it has a 20 millimeter cylindrical shank. So I could fit very nicely on it without any play or was just great not to have to machine that hardened steel shank. Um, two angular ball bearings in the front, slightly preloaded with foil. Uh, they, are, they are compressed by uh, this, um, this ring. And then in the back, one floating um, deep groove ball bearing and they're all tied together uh, with spacers and, and this bolt in the end, right? And then there's um, HTD5 pulleys in between and this clear path 2331 uh, servo. So you will ask why use this servo for that use. It's it's pretty much wasted. It cost about 300 bucks. Well, the reason is I hit a pretty good deal on eBay, a good auction for uh, three servos this size and one in my fridge for for under 1000 bucks. So the latest used two, I had two other uh, in my hands. I say, hey, I know that I have them, don't want to sell them. I just make something useful out of it. So it right now is just a wire to power here. You can daisy chain them very simply. So I can just make a jumper from this X servo that's just below. And it's uh, routed to the computer with this micro USB cable. And then to the ClearPath MSP software for demonstration. Right, so this is what it looks like. Now, the, the good thing with having a servo for this kind of use is you can go from very, very slow, like one RPM to whatever you like, that's slightly below 3000 RPM, which is really, really not. So now I can jog it manually. Now, this is not the best thing to use. I don't think I'm going to use the centroid control for that either. It it would be wa wasting uh one, one servo output, even though I have four, so that if I just need three, even with the C-axis, but whatever. The best way is probably just to fit um, um, quadrature um, motion generator just here with a potentiometer and, and two switches for uh, clockwise, kind of clockwise, and just have it standard on not rotated to control it. It won't bring anything. So this is jogging one RPM. So use this to slow. Now just to demonstrate how slow those things can go. And even when stopped, I can I can try to rotate with my hand. I can barely barely move it. It's still still trying to hold its position. Now that's one thousand. Uh, it's a little bit loud now. The only thing that's really noisy here is actually the bell. The servo itself, itself doesn't make much the bearings either. It's it's mostly the bell. And now that's 2500 RPM. Right, I can go obviously the opposite direction. And this is the max size tool that I can fit in there because those are your 11 colors. This is a 10 mm end mill, which is good enough. Now, why the hell would I need that? Well, basically, when I turn, I do many things like hubs that hold bearings and flanges. And you always need some kind of hole in there, uh, right? I mean, off-center holes, uh, hole patterns, uh, flats, and, and, and so on. So I don't have a really good mirror right now. I'm going to upgrade very soon to a bigger mill and make another uh, centroid icon retrofit. Now, you, you may want to follow that. It's coming in about a month. Uh, but then the point is I didn't want to unclamp the part from the... This is a 4 chuck, so I can put anything in there. I just wanted to have my holes and my flats and so on done 
before removing the part. And doing aircraft stuff needs to be accurate, needs to be light. And I also want to do some um, light interpolation milling to uh, to make some some cutouts. And um, so that's why I have this middle, and that's why then I'm going to work on making a C-axis. Now, right now it, it is set um, in the radial direction. I can very, very simply remove it from there, flip it, and put it right there. Except I didn't see that coming, so um, yeah, I need to jam it a little bit hard or, or uh, slightly modify the position of the handles, but whatever. I can do both directions and do, and, and being either um, on parallel to the axis or the perpendicular in a couple of seconds, so that, that's great. Now, the thing I really like with this, now I see very simple to remove. Remove, po remove power, remove signal, and this is it. Now, there you have your very small spindle with decent power. It's like 200 watts. Pretty neat, huh? Now, that's the other thing I wanted to show you. This is uh, the layout of the encoder. It sits on the server housing, the, the server mount, just because it was simpler, I made those two plates. And this is a redrive, uh, one to one ratio with an 85 belt. And uh, hide name ERN1017 encoder, which has 3600 lines. So that's 1400, 400 um, counts per ref. But the thing is, if you look at, at the label, it says TTL 10 times, so it actually has a built-in interpolation, which now means it has uh, 144,400 counts per rev, which which is huge. Uh, I hope the acorn is going to uh, is going to to handle that uh, with uh, with high RPM. Well, high. Uh, now the only thing is I only put a center bearing in there. I need to put another smaller bearing which I didn't have, so tried anyway, failed. Uh, in the center on, on the stub shaft here that goes to the encoder, otherwise the encoder wobbles and you don't want to see that. Right. And uh, so the very big next thing once I've done that, that, that's going to allow me to do threading and tapping, which is very useful on the next, obviously. Um, the very next thing that I'm going to do, but that's quite a big project, but it's going to help me tremendously, is fitting this big boy NEMA 34 clear path, which I got in the same deal. So that's the final stage of the battery drive, 8010. And this is going to be an intermediate stage. So that's a total ratio of about uh, 1 to 13, which I hope going to be enough for light duty milling uh, with circular interpolation and holding position while drilling holes. Um, if it doesn't, well, I guess I just uh, ditch the first stage, or not, by the way, and put a NEMA 34 gear head, which cost about 100 bucks, and that's for low quality stuff. So that's why I wanted to try all belts first. And now you say I have... Um, this drive and then the servo. You don't want the servo to spin while the, the, the main motor, that's a 3 kilowatt asynchronous motor with the FD, main spin drive. You don't want that to spin the servo uh, at 10 times spin speed, obviously. So I'm going to do the fat out bell clutch thing with this kind of uh, roller tensioner on it and with a casing around the belt so that when you remove tension from the belt, it expands in the housing and doesn't contact the, the, the pulley anymore. So that acts as really um, full, full uh, disconnected drive. So that's about it, hope you liked it and stay tuned for next updates on, on this uh, very nice slate.